Brock Lesnar, the beast incarnate, a dominance unlike any other in WWE history. But lately, silence. No earth-shattering entrances, no deafening roars from the crowd, just an empty ring. Where did Brock go? What's really going on with one of wrestling's most fearsome competitors? Today we dive into the latest chapter of Lesnar's storied journey, the fall of the beast. Brock Lesnar, known in the WWE Universe as the Beast Incarnate, has seen a dramatic shift in his life and career. Once celebrated for his strength, agility, and dominating presence in the ring, Lesnar now finds himself embroiled in a scandal that has shocked both the wrestling community and the public. This scandal involves serious allegations of sexual abuse and trafficking, significantly tarnishing his image. The controversy began with a lawsuit filed by Janelle Grant, a former WWE employee, accusing Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, and Brock Lesnar of sexual abuse and trafficking. The lawsuit claims that these high-profile WWE figures were involved in a series of disturbing activities, including the sharing of explicit content and coercing Grant into sexual relations. Janelle Grant's lawsuit initially targeted Vince McMahon, the longtime CEO of WWE, and John Laurinaitis, a former wrestler and executive. In the lawsuit, she claimed that McMahon had forced her into sexual situations and degraded her in exchange for giving her a job at WWE as administrator coordinator in WWE's legal department department after meeting her in 2019. She stated in the lawsuit that in June 2021, McMahon and another executive locked her in her office and took turns sexually assaulting her. She also claimed that days later, McMahon locked her in his private locker room and forced himself on her. In her lawsuit, she claimed that McMahon allegedly had sent explicit text messages to her and to other people within WWE about her, and she also provided screenshots as part of the lawsuit. In one text, McMahon allegedly wrote to Grant, saying, I'm the only one who owns you and and controls who I want to you. McMahon allegedly sent explicit photos of Grant to other people in WWE, and when others at WWE expressed interest in having sex with Grant after seeing photos on his phone, McMahon had allegedly texted saying, she may scream and try to say no, although it would be difficult to say anything with a down her throat. Grant also claimed that McMahon had told her on multiple occasions to go to Laurinaitis' hotel rooms and have sex with him before work days. She also claimed that she was forced by Vince McMahon to sign a non-disclosure agreement in 2022, which stated that she remained silent about her allegations and her relationship with McMahon in exchange for $3 million. She said that this pressure to sign the NDA came after Vince's wife, Linda McMahon, had found out about their relationship. Grant claimed in her lawsuit that the payment's promise stopped after an initial $1 million payment, and so she is choosing to void that agreement and sue for unspecified damages. In her lawsuit, she claimed that McMahon had her create personalized sexual content for a WWE superstar that he was trying to re-sign. According to Khadija Safdar of the Wall Street Journal, the suit didn't name the professional wrestler but described him as both a UFC fighter and WWE talent. People familiar with the matter identified the wrestler as Brock Lesnar, one of WWE's biggest names. Regarding Lesnar, Grant claimed that after Lesnar had signed a new contract, McMahon allegedly texted her, saying that part of the deal was f you. McMahon had allegedly given Lesnar her phone number, and she claimed that Lesnar had asked her to send a video of herself urinating. Lesnar, who is married to former WWE star Sable, allegedly told Grant he wanted to set a play date in December 2021, but a snowstorm canceled the plans. This inclusion of Brock Lesnar in the allegations shocked everyone in the wrestling community. Lesnar, known for his formidable persona both in and out of the ring, was now being painted in a vastly different light. According to the lawsuit, Grant alleges that Lesnar was not only aware of the abusive actions, but also actively participated in them. This includes accusations of sharing explicit content and coercing Grant into unwanted sexual activities. The details of these allegations are both graphic and disturbing, indicating a pattern of behavior that, if true, would mark a significant fall from grace for Lesnar. The case took another turn when Janelle Grant agreed to pause her lawsuit pending a federal investigation. In a statement released by Ann Callis, her attorney, she said, Miss Grant has consented to a request by the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York to stay her case against Mr. McMahon, WWE, and Mr. Laurinaitis, pursuant to a pending non-public investigation. This decision indicates the seriousness of the allegations and the potential involvement of other high-profile individuals within WWE. The federal investigation is expected to delve deeper into the claims, seeking evidence that could either substantiate or refute Grant's accusations. The lawsuit has also brought renewed scrutiny on WWE's internal culture and practices. 
Vince McMahon, already a controversial figure, now faces intensified criticism for his leadership and the environment he has fostered within the organization. The inclusion of high-profile figures like Lesnar in the allegations suggests that the issue of abuse and exploitation may be more widespread than previously acknowledged. For Janelle Grant, the decision to pause her lawsuit pending a federal investigation is a strategic one. By allowing federal authorities to investigate, she hopes to gather more substantial evidence to support her claims. This move also signals the seriousness of her allegations, indicating that they warrant a thorough and unbiased examination by law enforcement. The federal investigation is expected to be comprehensive, examining not only the specific allegations against McMahon, Laurinaitis, and Lesnar, but also the broader culture within WWE. This investigation could lead to significant legal repercussions for those involved, potentially resulting in criminal charges if the allegations are substantiated. Brock Lesnar's involvement in the scandal has significantly affected his public image. The accusations of sexual abuse and trafficking have had an immediate and profound impact on Lesnar's standing within WWE and the broader public sphere. The gravity of the charges, combined with the high-profile nature of the individuals involved, has drawn widespread media attention. News outlets and social media platforms are abuzz with discussions about the scandal, further increasing the negative publicity around Lesnar. The fallout has been swift and severe. WWE, facing mounting pressure to address the situation, has taken decisive action to distance itself from Lesnar. This includes removing him from all upcoming events and programming, effectively sidelining one of its biggest stars. Lesnar's absence from WWE shows and pay-per-view events has not gone unnoticed, with fans expressing both shock and disappointment. Moreover, WWE has taken steps to erase Lesnar's presence from its merchandise and digital content. His likeness and branding have been pulled from the company's online store, and any merchandise featuring him has been discontinued. This move extends to WWE video games, where Lesnar's character has been removed or significantly downplayed. Such actions signal WWE's attempt to mitigate the damage to its brand by dissociating from Lesnar amid the scandal. Merchandise sales, a significant revenue stream for WWE superstars, have dropped drastically due to his removal from the product lineup. Lesnar's future in the company seems uncertain with the way things are turning out. With the federal investigation ongoing and no clear resolution in sight, WWE has opted for a cautious approach. The organization is likely awaiting the investigation's findings before making any definitive decisions regarding Lesnar's status. This period of uncertainty has fueled speculation about whether Lesnar will ever return to the WWE ring. The potential long-term implications for Lesnar's career are significant, even if the investigation ultimately cleared him of wrongdoing. The stigma associated with these allegations may be hard to shake off. The wrestling community, known for its passionate fan base, may find it challenging to fully embrace Lesnar again, given the gravity of the accusations. Lesnar's personal life has also come under serious investigation. The allegations have prompted a closer look at his behavior outside the ring, with media outlets and fans breaking down his past actions and relationships, paying attention to every little detail of information. Unfortunately, this would reveal so much and shed much light on his dark past, as this would not be the first time that Lesnar's name had been brought up in a sexual assault allegation. Brock has been involved in a number of scandals revolving around sexual assault in the past. While he was still in OVW, Lesnar had gotten into trouble with both the managing officials and his colleague Jim Cornette for sexually harassing Cornette's then-girlfriend and fellow wrestler Sin. In an interview with Wrestling Shoot Interviews, Kenny Bolin, the former OVW manager, recounted the event saying, Sin told him that she had got her pierced that day, and his spot was to pick Sin up over his head. She said, whatever you do, don't get your fingers anywhere near my it's very sensitive there. I got it pierced today. Well, Brock Lesnar being Brock put his fingers not only near her but in her She was furious. She went back to Jimmy and Danny. Jimmy lost his mind, went out in the parking lot, and confronted Brock. Bolin stated that in the altercation between Lesnar and Cornette, Cornette threatened to shoot Lesnar in the kneecap, saying, I'm gonna shoot you in your kneecaps, you Let's see how your wrestling career is at that point. Terry Runnels, a former WWE manager and wife to the wrestling veteran Goldust, also had a lot to say about her interactions with Lesnar during her time. In her interview with Vice, she recounted the events of that day, saying, Brock was very new to the business, and he exposed himself to me at the Insurrection pay-per-view like a real d 
I remember that night I was doing interviews. I was backstage and I hear my name called and Brock was in this room. Dustin was in the room, my ex-husband at the time and Brock did the whole thing. I know sold it, went to my dressing room. Dustin came and he's like, don't sell it. I'm like, I'm not selling it. I didn't sell it, not gonna. In other words, let it lie, leave it alone. She further stated that his disrespect was unwarranted, especially to someone of her level of experience saying, I would have much rather him not be so disrespectful of a female that's been in this business for as long as I have been. He knew he was gonna have a lot of power, that they were gonna give him the strap, but at that point, I'd been in this business a long time. This intense focus on his personal conduct makes the case much more complex as Lesnar navigates both the legal challenges and the court of public opinion. The consequences of this scandal seem to extend beyond Lesnar's individual career. The reputation of WWE as an organization faces significant damage, including Vince McMahon and other high-profile figures in the allegations has intensified scrutiny of the company's leadership and culture. Amidst all these controversies, it is important to remember Brock Lesnar's beginnings and the journey that shaped him into the intimidating figure he is today. From farm boy to the beast, Brock Lesnar's rise. Brock Lesnar's journey from a humble farm in South Dakota to becoming one of the most formidable figures in professional wrestling is nothing short of extraordinary. Born on July 12, 1977 in Webster, South Dakota, Lesnar was raised on a dairy farm. This rural upbringing instilled in him a strong work ethic and a level of physical toughness that would later define his athletic career. Lesnar's early life was marked by hard work and dedication. Growing up on a farm, he was accustomed to long days of labor, which helped build his impressive physique. From a young age, he displayed a natural talent for wrestling, a sport that quickly became his passion. His high school years were spent honing his skills on the wrestling mat, where he emerged as a standout athlete. After high school, Lesnar attended Bismarck State College, where he continued to excel in wrestling. His prowess on the mat earned him a scholarship to the University of Minnesota, a powerhouse in collegiate wrestling. At Minnesota, Lesnar's talent truly began to shine. In 2000, he won the NCAA Division I Heavyweight Wrestling Championship, stamping his status as one of the top amateur wrestlers in the country. Lesnar's success in amateur wrestling laid the foundation for his transition to professional wrestling. His imposing physique, combined with his technical skills, made him a natural fit for the WWE. In 2000, he signed a developmental contract with the organization, and by 2002, he made his official debut on WWE's main roster. Lesnar's entry into WWE was nothing short of spectacular. Billed as the next big thing, he quickly lived up to the hype. His first few matches showcased his incredible strength and athleticism, setting him apart from other wrestlers. Within months of his debut, Lesnar achieved a remarkable feat by winning the King of the Ring tournament, a victory that catapulted him into the spotlight. The same year, Lesnar faced one of his biggest challenges in the ring, The Rock, for the WWE Undisputed Championship. At SummerSlam 2002, Lesnar defeated The Rock to become the youngest WWE champion in history at just 25 years old. This victory was a testament to his rapid rise in the industry and his undeniable talent. Lesnar's wrestling style was characterized by his brute strength and explosive power. His signature moves like the F5 and the Kimura Lock became fan favorites and struck fear into his opponents. His matches were often fast-paced and intense, showcasing his ability to dominate even the most seasoned wrestlers. Throughout his initial WWE run, Lesnar engaged in memorable feuds with some of the biggest names in wrestling, including Kurt Angle, The Undertaker, and Big Show. His rivalry with Angle, in particular, produced several classic matches, including their epic encounter at WrestleMania 19, where Lesnar won the WWE Championship for the second time. This match also featured Lesnar attempting and famously botching a shooting star press, which despite not landing correctly, highlighted his athleticism and willingness to take risks. Lesnar's impact on WWE was profound. His presence brought a new level of intensity and realism to the sport. Fans were captivated by his raw power and dominant performances, which often left his opponents in a heap. By 2004, however, Lesnar decided to leave WWE to pursue other opportunities, a move that shocked the martial arts. After a very brief period in the NFL with the Minnesota Vikings, he transitioned to MMA, where he continued to build on his reputation as a fierce competitor. He signed with the Ultimate Fighting Championship in 2008 and quickly made a name for himself in the heavyweight division. Lesnar's MMA career was marked by significant achievements, including winning the UFC Heavyweight Championship in 2008. His crossover appeal brought a new audience to MMA, and his fights were among the most watched events in UFC history. His bout against Frank Mir at UFC 100, for example, UFC history. Despite his success in MMA, Lesnar's journey was not without challenges. He faced serious health issues, including a battle with diverticulitis, which forced him to take time off and eventually led to his retirement from MMA in 2011. His resilience and determination 
during this period demonstrated his tenacity and fighting spirit. Lesnar's return to WWE in 2012 marked a new chapter in his career. He re-entered the wrestling world with the same intensity and dominance that characterized his earlier run. This time, however, he brought with him the credibility of a former UFC champion, which added to his mystique and appeal. Lesnar's second run in WWE saw him capture multiple championships and engage in high-profile feuds with top stars like John Cena, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. His matches continued to be highlights of WWE programming, drawing significant viewership and fan interest. His ability to blend real-life combat skills with professional wrestling theatrics made him a unique and compelling figure in sports entertainment. After his initial departure from WWE in 2004, Brock Lesnar sought new challenges beyond the squared circle. He decided to test out the waters of professional football, switching to another adrenaline-pumping sport. Despite not having played football since high school, Lesnar pursued a career in the NFL, driven by his competitive spirit and desire to prove himself in another physically demanding sport. In 2004, Lesnar signed with the Minnesota Vikings as a defensive tackle. His incredible physicality and athleticism earned him a spot on the team's preseason roster. However, his lack of recent football experience and a groin injury sustained in a motorcycle accident hampered his progress. Despite these setbacks, Lesnar impressed with his work ethic and raw potential during training camp and preseason games. Lesnar's time with the Vikings was short-lived. He was released before the regular season began, ending his brief NFL career. Though his time in professional football was unsuccessful, it demonstrated Lesnar's relentless drive and willingness to step out of his comfort zone to pursue new avenues of athletic achievement. his legacy. One of his early matches upon returning was against John Cena at Extreme Rules 2012. One of the most iconic moments of Lesnar's career came at WrestleMania 30 in 2014. To the shock of everyone present, Lesnar ended The Undertaker's legendary undefeated streak at WrestleMania, a record that had stood for 21 matches. Another significant rivalry during Lesnar's return was with John Cena. Their match at SummerSlam 2014 is often regarded as one of the most dominant performances in WWE history. Lesnar destroyed Cena in a one-sided affair, delivering a never-before-seen feat of 16 German suplexes and capturing the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. Throughout his career, Lesnar has held multiple championship titles, including the WWE Championship, the Universal Championship, and the King of the Ring Tournament victory in 2002. His reigns were marked by his ability to dominate his opponents and his memorable rivalries with some of WWE's biggest stars. Lesnar's ability to generate intense rivalries and deliver memorable matches has been a key aspect of his success. His matches against stars like Kurt Angle, Goldberg, and Roman Reigns have consistently drawn significant attention and showcased his unique blend of power, agility, and intensity. Lesnar's in-ring style, characterized by suplexes, power moves, and his signature F5 finisher, has made him a standout performer in WWE. One of the most significant aspects of Lesnar's WWE career is his ability to break past the boundaries of professional wrestling. His crossover appeal, stemming from his success in both WWE and UFC has made him a unique figure in sports entertainment. Lesnar's matches are often treated as special attractions, drawing in not only wrestling fans, but also casual viewers intrigued by his larger-than-life persona. In addition to his impressive in-ring accomplishments, Lesnar's association with Paul Heyman has been a crucial element of his success. Heyman, serving as Lesnar's advocate, has delivered some of the most compelling promos in WWE history. His ability to build anticipation and hype around Lesnar's matches has significantly contributed to the aura of invincibility that surrounds the Beast Incarnate, the human behind the Beast. Behind the intimidating persona of the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar is a complex individual with a rich personal life marked by both triumphs and challenges. Away from the wrestling ring and the octagon, Lesnar's life is defined by his family passions and struggles. Brock Lesnar is a family man at heart. He is married to former WWE diva Rena Greek, better known by her ring name Sable. The couple tied the knot in 2006 and have two sons together, Turk and Duke. Lesnar also has twins from a previous relationship, a son named Luke and a daughter named Maya. Family is a central part of Lesnar's life, and he prefers to keep his personal life private, away from the public eye. Lesnar's passion for hunting is well documented. Growing up in rural South Dakota, he developed a love for the outdoors early on. Hunting is not just a hobby for Lesnar, but a way to connect with nature and find peace away from the demands of his professional life. He often retreats to his farm in Saskatchewan, Canada, where he enjoys hunting and spending time in the tranquility of the countryside. This passion reflects his grounding in simple rural 
values and provides him with a much-needed escape from his high-octane career. However, Lesnar's life has not been without its struggles. He has faced significant battles with addiction and mental health. In his autobiography, Death Clutch, My Story of Determination, Domination, and Survival, Lesnar candidly discusses his struggles with alcohol and painkillers during his early wrestling career. The intense physical demands of wrestling, coupled with the pressures of fame, led him down a path of substance abuse. Despite his on-screen persona of strength and his intimidating reputation, Lesnar faces mental health challenges like many others. His anxiety is something he manages carefully, choosing to spend time alone in Saskatchewan to recover. This practice helps him recharge after the intense experience of being in front of large audiences. In an interview on The Pat McAfee Show, Lesnar revealed how he had to keep his mental health in check to function properly. In the interview, he said, I have total, I have a total crash after being in front of audiences. Like I go hibernate uh, in Saskatchewan and I, I like my downer is like, the anxiety from all that is like, takes me like a few days to recover. How long has that been happening? Forever? Like Forever, yeah, it's been that way. Lesnar explained that he needs to go through this process because it's part of who he is. He likes to get away from people after his performances. He clarified. Cause I'm like, if I'm in front of an audience, then it just exhausts me, and so I gotta go and like recharge up. The former world champion also discussed his family background, which was marked by frequent street fights. Growing up around fights shaped Lesnar's early life and contributed to his tough exterior. He said, People from Webster, South Dakota will tell you the, the Lesnar family were <laughs> fighters. <laughs> and so I grew up six years younger than my two older brothers who went, you know, were getting out of jail on Sunday, uh, Monday mornings to go to school <laughs> because of street fights yeah. and, and, you know, so I grew up with that stigma. According to him, the stigma that followed him and his family for being fighters who were always getting into trouble greatly affected who he became as a person. His upbringing in a fighting environment influenced his approach to life and his career. His experiences with his brothers and their street fights contributed to his resilience and toughness. However, the anxiety he experiences is a reminder that even the toughest individuals have their struggles. In addition to these personal battles, Lesnar has been involved in several controversies throughout his career. In 2001, while still in WWE's developmental territory, he was arrested for suspected possession of illegal substances. The charges were eventually dropped when it was revealed that the substances were not illegal, but the incident brought unwanted attention to the young wrestler. This brush with the law was a stark contrast to the disciplined athlete known for his relentless work ethic and dedication. Another significant controversy arose in 2016 when Lesnar was flagged for a potential anti-doping violation following his victory at UFC. 200. He tested positive for a banned substance, clomiphene, which is often used to counteract the side effects of steroid use. Lesnar received a one-year suspension from MMA and a fine. Despite these controversies, Lesnar has managed to maintain a successful career in both WWE and UFC. Did you enjoy this video? Click on any of the cards on your screen right now for similar content. Thank you.